Hi guys, so Nathan was asking how I can actually create this. So we're going to say that this band here is the same as this little gap and then it's going to sort of tail off into a single band down the bottom which is actually thicker. Okay, So there's a lot of ways we could do this. Um, we could use a wedge and just put it straight through it which is going to be the easiest method. Um, or we can actually create some uh, geometry from a base. So I'm going to switch to ZBrush now where I've already got a boolean circle. So it's basically 1.5 across and if I throw this one up you'll see what I've done. So I've got this and this, let me come out of this. So that's what we had. Okay, and we created this which you've done before. Okay guys, so now we've got this, what we can do is we can decide what we're going to do with it. So I want an even strip running out from the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the top. Now this is slightly different, this one I've got here, but the same principles apply. So I'm going to take this and basically move it up. I'm going to turn this one on. And this is purely as a guide for me to see um, how far I've got to push out. Okay, so I'm going to put it there might be better to go to document just take that back range and just bring it up so it's a bit clearer here and I'm going to jump to the actual ring now so I'll just do a duplicate of that ring and I'll bring it down to the bottom okay so now I'm going to go into here I'm going to make sure this is centered okay uh, I have got symmetry turned on so I need to turn it off center that come into there go to taper we're going to pull this up it's going to go half this distance when you do a full taper okay um, I need to change this exponent so it goes from top to bottom so I put it on zero I need to move to the side just move this one in so it straightens that axis there that x-axis I need to just click in here and click accept then I need to do the same again because I want it to be the same width across so if we take this ring and I just duplicate it again you can see I need to come out to at least this far okay so back down to this one back into here back to taper I move it again you're gonna see that I'm gonna reach that point there now I'm gonna do that exponent so it goes from the base to the bottom I'm gonna move that back in again I'm gonna accept it so I had to do basically two tapers to create this shape right now we need to get our cut out from the inside so what I'm gonna do is go to the Z modeler brush I'm going to go over this piece and we're going to go to press the spacebar, go to insert, multi edge loops. I'm basically turning off the same poly group, turn on the same poly group, sorry. I'm going to click once in here and it'll give me the midline. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that one off so I can see where I am. I'm going to come into this edge here. At this point, I'm going to turn symmetry on, on the Y. This is my Y axis. So I'm going to go over this edge now. I'm going to go to single edge loop and I'm going to get it closer to this right hand edge. I'm going to click and then I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to drag it in until it meets with that bottom. Can you see that? So that gives me the exact gap. It's a little bit out actually, so let me just do it again. Now I know this gap is exactly the same as this. And I've got this nice cut through the middle. Okay, so now I've done that, I can turn this guide off. And we've got several points over the top of each other, but we should still better do what we need to do. So, what I want to do now is I want to get rid of this. Now, notice I didn't Z remesh it to make a clean mesh, I just left it because I wanted the outer one to be um, sharp. So control shift on the green, okay? Come into geometry and go to modify geometry. Delete hidden. I can't see the inside. I'm gonna go over the Z modeler brush. I'm gonna go all polygons. Let's turn off symmetry. So I'm over here, all polygons, and I'm gonna bring this in. But to be able to see the inside of the non-surface normals, I need to go to display properties down here and turn on double. Okay, now I've got that, I need to turn on my initial guide, which is this one here, just so I can see I'm extruding at the right amount. I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna drag down until it hits that edge. 
that give me the correct extrusion. Remember, I can always use the manual. Now I can turn this one off and I'm left with this. So if I use the Z modeler now and I come over one of these edges and I go to single poly and drag in, if I drag it right the way through, you're gonna see it cut right the way through. So I'm gonna keep dragging these through. Now do remember that our surface normals are around the wrong way. I could have turned symmetry on here and it would have saved me a bit of time. And finally this one. And that then gives me my cut through. So that is now evenly cut through double banded ring. Okay, now remember that if I turn off display properties, it is actually reverse. So I just need to hit the flip and then it will be okay. Do remember to do that. So now you've got a ring that you could just subdivide or you could add bevels to it around the edges. Bevel. and then subdivide. Now it's causing a little bit of a thing there. So let me just show you how you can fix that. I'm gonna go back. So I've taken the bevel off and I'm basically gonna weld these points together. So I'm gonna mask this area at the top. I'm gonna to zoom down, see these little dots. I'm gonna to go to geometry, modify geometry down here to weld. I'm gonna turn this up to about 25 and I hit weld points. Now it's become one. Now you're gonna notice that where we masked it, it's gonna be fine. You're always going to get a bit of pinching, but that's basically how we can do a double ring frame. No problem. So hopefully that's answered your question, um, Nathan. Now the other thing is that they you could also use a boolean straight through this. So if I was to go back um, to where I've got the piece just like this, then you could just do a straight boolean with another piece of the ring or actually bring something in so I could go in and append something I could come into here go to the cube I'm going to make that poly mesh 3d I'm going to come down to um, the initialize I'm going to put these on one and I'm going to click Q cube that'll give me a cube I'm going to press Control W to make it one poly group I'm going to come in here and rename it and call it cut through so this is just two ways that you could do it. Of course, there's loads more of ways as well. Uh, we're gonna come into this now and append that new cut through cube in. So I've got him there. And you can probably guess what I'm gonna do here. Okay, I'm now going to just go into solo mode. I'm gonna take this, mask this end I'm going to bring that in so it's like one point. I'll bring it right the way on. I'll bring it pretty much nearly all the way, but not quite. From that distance, it's going to look good. All right come out solo I'm going to take this piece now I'm going to move it this whoop, need to unmask it I'm going to move it this way I'm going to bring it down into the ring activate boolean 
put this into boolean mesh and there we have it and I can create a boolean mesh of that so my boolean mesh has now been created turn this off this off and this is what we have okay so that's how we can do that um, really easy um, to create a double ring you could pretty much work this out from my other lessons that I've, I've done stuff similar to this uh, but hopefully this helps you guys out